testing rationing, meaning the failure of market forces? How do you ensure financial stability where the key market segment, which is the foreign market, is facing rationing, meaning the failure of market forces? And the final question from online, with a loan deposit ratio for key dominant banks in the country, um, how is the Bank of Tanzania preparing to mitigate potential liquidity crises in the unlikely event of external shock? With the loan deposit ratio for key dominant banks in the country, how is the Bank of Tanzania preparing to mitigate potential liquidity crisis in the unlikely event of extent external shock? Can you respond to the first question quickly? One minute. Uh, yes, um, on the issue of uh, uh, pricing or price differences when it comes uh, to uh, interest rates, um, here I think is where we are calling for maybe the analysis of um, more data because as we have seen, uh, there are differences. And uh, let me say, because if you look at the... Um, the provider, for example, the MNOs, let's say, uh, 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 let's ask ourselves, are the MNOs doing maybe still doing more investment in a way that uh, they require uh, returns to be able uh, to cover those investments which they are doing? Uh, looking at the interest rate being charged, how is it shared among the MNOs maybe the fintech which are behind and the banks. Because when it comes, for example, to, bank, uh, to failure of the borrowers to repay the loan, then how is the cost of failure being shared? Are the MNOs also taking the shares? Are the fintech taking the shares? Are the banks, because what we understand at the end of the day, the, um, uh, the bank might write you off, okay? But again, that will result in tomorrow hazard, yeah? The bank just being writing off. And when they write you off, it means it's the depositor's money that is being lost. Now, when it comes to the pricing, I think we have to look at it. And maybe as we move forward, we need to find a way where maybe we can reduce I know there is kind of, uh, I don't know, is it a secular or whatever, that the microfinance institutions might be required not to charge more than 4%. Now, that's where the required interest, the adjusted, is coming in. And then, by charging that lower, might also increase the confidence of the people to continue borrow, borrowing, doing this, I mean, taking the digital loans, because you attract more people uh, to take the loan. Thank I think you. that can uh, result into that. And again, I might end up by saying, let's also the borrower, uh, because of high repayment rate we have seen, more than 95%, let's then also, I mean, uh, uh, Share the dividend by charging them at least the lower rates. Thank, Thank you, you. Professor. Um, there was an issue of uh, loan to deposit ratio that it has been uh, increasing. Can I ask uh, Mr. Mchangila to respond on that? And Dr. Masudi will respond on the uh, foreign exchange uh, market failures. Uh, thanks. Um, so on that question, I think it uh, speaks about uh, what I was actually trying to highlight on the strategies, uh, that uh, for any uh, financial um, industry, then the regulator will try and establish the domestic systematic uh, important banks, uh, meaning um, the banks which, um, by any means, you have to make sure that they survive for the industry to continue to uh, survive. Um, so have we done so? Yes, uh, our regulator have done so two years ago. Uh, they have identified uh, seven 
uh, the most systematic important bank. Uh, they are putting, they're putting together a framework uh, which will govern um, uh, this. And I was also talking about the enhanced uh, supervisory uh, framework for this systematic uh, domestic important bank. So that is very, very important because regardless of uh, whatever you're saying, as long as the enhanced super supervision is, is done, uh, then you are assured that the, the industry will continue to, uh, to prevail. Just to add um, uh, some other points into that, um, and on the liquidity side, uh, so what, what is happening, the, the regulator has also come with uh, some guidance on um, the liquidity coverage ratio. So we have uh, some new uh, mechanisms uh, of making sure that uh, beyond the deposits which you're saying uh, on uh, the, the deal uh, ratio computation, then at any point in time, each and every bank is, uh, is using the only required deposit to extend the loans. Uh, so with this uh, very uh, severe sort of ratios, they will help us to uh, comply with the uh, basal requirements, uh, which uh, is very good for, uh, for the industry. So I think going forward, yes, there has been an increasing uh, trend when you look at the financials, but we should not be uh, scared because uh, the guideline and framework is in place uh, to protect the industry. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Masud, can you say something on the foreign exchange uh, market forces? Okay, thank you, Chair. I think it is a very difficult question, but I will try just to give some few sentences. I hope in this room there could be others who can answer this question better. Yeah, my answer to that is that we increase exports and reduce imports. In the long run, then we will be saved. Thank you. But there could be some other uh, elaborations. From, from others. Let me uh, have uh, Changila to add on that. I think he's from Treasury background. <laughs> I have no. Okay. Uh, th thanks, Chair. Uh, I think just, just to add it, first of all, uh, this is not a unique uh, challenge to us. Uh, most of the emerging uh, market uh, countries are facing similar challenge. I think yesterday, um, um, during the first presentation, um, uh, Cosmos Kemayo did actually highlight uh, some of this uh, sentiment. Uh, so one, it's not a unique uh, issue for us here in Tanzania, uh, but second, what is it that we are doing uh, as, an, as an industry, as a country? So there are both uh, monetary as well as uh, fiscal uh, measures which have been implemented uh, to try and address the, sh the short, medium, and uh, long-term uh, sort of uh, solutions. Uh, in the sh short term end, I think we have seen uh, a number of uh, interventions, including the reforms uh, which were announced by the uh, Bank of Tanzania last, last year. Uh, but also, uh, there, there are other initiatives uh, which are meant to uh, improve on um, uh, input association. Uh, you have heard about uh, our focus uh, in improving uh, the agri um, sort of um, output. Uh, we are important significantly uh, on, say, on, on, on oil, and now we have an initiative to make sure that we increase investment in that area. We are also increasing in, uh, investment in irrigation, which will help us uh, to increase our export from the uh, agriculture, uh, but also a number of other reforms which I uh, if we had uh, enough time, we could go um, um, one by one, but I just wanted to cement that, one, this is not a unique uh, issue for us here in Tanzania, and two, the important is for us uh, to see how, how, what is it that we can do on short term, medium term, and long term, and those have been done, uh, the industry has been uh, engaged by the regulator, um, various stakeholders are uh, engaging in various discussion to see how best we can address this issue. Thank you. Thank you. I know he was clever to take my <laughs> microphone. So let me invite uh, comments from the floor discussions. Interesting time. We'll only be able to take two questions. We have one hand here and I think one hand there and allow us to continue with the discussion and engagement of a tea break. 
Martin. Uh, thanks. Uh, my name is Martin Warioba from Warioba Venture. Uh, more question to the panel regarding the high interest rate. So I'm a big advocate for consumer protection, and I believe we should protect consumers, especially the underserved that we bring uh, to the formal system. Uh, I also agree that financial institutions, both banks and non-banks, can do better with data analytics and segregate uh, products you know, for different customers. So I fully support the data analytics comment that has been issued. But my question uh, goes to the wider stakeholders. Uh, because we understand the high interest rates are there because of the risk that is in that process. And when we talk about the risking the process, it's, it's beyond financial institutions. So I'll give two or three examples that I think some of the areas that we also need to address, but I didn't hear that being mentioned, and maybe I would like to hear the panel uh, observations on those. One is on the regal uh, and regulatory framework. We know sometimes also the borrowers, uh, as much as 95% repay, but the, the defaulters are there. And sometimes the law protects the defaulters. So when you default and you start collecting, they can quickly run to the courts, put injunctions. And that's probably one of the reasons why that high interest rate is there, because sometimes financial institutions want to accommodate for those defaulters or in advance. So how are we looking at that, and how can we address that in support, holistically, to support the whole financial sector? And I'm asking that question, taking note that there are honorable parliamentarians uh, in front of us. Uh, second, how can we incentivize the credit scoring system that we have? For those defaulters, are we willing to blacklist them from credit bureaus so that financial institutions know they are only dealing with clean borrowers and there is that incentives? Uh, the last part, um, it's also to add incentives to the, to the wider sector. So for example, we have specifically put forward, we want to support the agriculture sector, MSME sectors. Can we provide incentives for financial institutions when they actually processing payments or including these people into the systems, they can be incentivized some of the cost. A good example, we all need to do KYC. And we know NIDA has to be sustainable. They charge a fee, and it's, it's fair for them to charge a fee. But can we incentivize anybody, fintech, startup, bank, MNO, any program that is dealing with smallholder farmers, underserved communities, MSMEs? Maybe they get a waiver on NIDA fees. Maybe government subsidize for that KYC check. So you don't fail to save the community because there's also a lot of high costs in that pipeline. Thank you. Thank you. Final question from the audience, and then we'll take the rest of our tea break. Good morning. My name is Julius Rimo from the Financial Intelligence Unit, Tanzania. My question is, uh, how do banks balance in terms of the effort to increase earnings, to increase their profits and reaching their targets? and protecting the bank uh, uh, from taking illicit proceeds from many crimes, corruption, drugs, and whatnot, and also from being used by shadow economy. Let's say uh, being taken money from Hawala, which is operating underground, and passes through the bank, and then to Hawalada, the, the agents. And this you should take note that uh, Tanzania, Kenya, and uh, Many uh, sub saharan countries are in the gray list of FATF, FATF, which is Financial Action Task Force. And one of the items is that banks don't comply on MLCFT uh, issues. Thank you very much. Thank you. Moderator, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the last question I'll ask uh, um, Changila to respond on that uh, brief. And the other one, Prof. Uh, Shengomo. Uh, 
It is about uh, the issue of uh, high risk vis a vis um, uh, uh, financial compliance uh, on the incentivizing the credit scoring. Yeah, um, on the issue of uh, credit scoring. Can you put the mic closer to the mouth? Okay. Ah. Yeah, uh, we are talking about, uh, uh, you say, protection of the consumers, but at the same time we have uh, high risk and we understand uh, 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 the digital loans which I have just uh, uh, presented uh, most of them are not secured, and um, that's why the the providers are making arguments uh, that uh, they have to charge um, high interests, uh, high interest rates because the loans are not secured. Uh, but what I I can say is that uh, uh, based on the experience, yeah, they are not secured. Yes. But we have seen high uh, repayment of the loan, okay? Uh, and that is since uh, we have made the analysis, and that is since, uh, let's say, uh, 2019. It's about five years analysis. And in some of the providers, they have even indicated it's 100% paid. So if it is 100% paid, but still, we say we still continue to charge them very high interest rate. When I say very high, imagine someone borrowing the money, maybe it's just like an overdraft. Within, let's say, six hours, because we have these people who have been trying. You borrow 50,000, uh, maybe at, um, at seven in the morning because you don't have access to, and you want to do something immediately. And they, at, um, at 12, you repay. But when you are repaying, you pay with 6,000, you, you know, you borrow 50, but then you pay, you pay the total amount of 56. So within six hours, you have paid uh, 6,000 as they, including the cost, all the costs. So, Again, is that what we are calling fair pricing? And if they have been paying anyway, we have also other borrowers when we analyze those who are taking even bigger loans, you find they are paying maybe the payment is about 90%. And you say these are risky clients because it's not secured, but the repayment is 100%. The repayment is 97%. And you charge them, if we convert that 14%, what I have shown, or oh, 24%, that 24% is per month, now multiplied by 12, if it is per year. But the one who is uh, repaying maybe 90% repayment, uh, the interest rate per year is maybe 25% or 16 to 25. But this one who is repaying 97%, the interest rate is about 200%. So what is what? Should we still uh, maybe um, put ourselves behind and say, these are very risky, but they're paying, yeah? Let's look on the modalities of looking at those data Thank and you. say, let's moderate this. They, they are risky client because they don't have collateral, but still, they are paying. Let's okay. look on how to advance on this. Uh, on the issue of incentives, Yes, we have seen some of the incentives being paid. For example, bank guarantee, uh, as we have seen. Uh, those are some kind of incentives. If you are targeting these clients, you get, sometimes you get access to the guarantee. We had yesterday the agricultural. Uh, they are accessing may, maybe the loan from the BOT at 3%, and they are going to lend at a given percent. Those are kinds of incentives being uh, provided. So we can okay. say they are being provided. Maybe we can look more. And what I'm saying, this we have to do this, all of us. It's not just the role of the central bank. We have to work together as all the stakeholders okay. you, to be able to find the solutions. Thanks. Thank you. Jangela, can you 
responded very briefly on the balance of the property and the target claims via shadow economy. Uh, thanks, Chair. I think you had given me another question, but anyway. Um, uh, so I think um, we um, very uh, transparent, and there is a requirement for financial institution banks uh, to be transparent to uh, the wider public. So there is a requirement for us to publish uh, our financials on quarterly uh, basis. The financial being audited. Uh, but also there's a supervisor and monitoring uh, tools. Uh, and let's uh, be honest to each other. So banks um, uh, are investing to make sure that they also maximize um, uh, return to their shareholders. But if we are doing so, then we are conscious of uh, the consumer and customers who we are serving, and hence the consumer protection regulation, where we are disclosing um, uh, all the aspects of the products uh, which we are offering, uh, including uh, the fees and various charges which we are um, charging on, on the products, and this is actually published on the newspapers. Uh, so that all the consumers uh, can uh, see where they should go in terms of the, the best service. So I think that is a, a very wider discussion topic which requires a separate sort of uh, session. But I just wanted to say that uh, from the financial institution, uh, there is a transparency, transparent way of communicating to all uh, the stakeholders. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, you will agree with me that uh, this topic is highly uh, loaded. We may need even a week or so to discuss all these aspects. And uh, coming from the academic institution, I can promise anybody here that we are going to have, uh, we are going to take from here and uh, have a wider discussion from uh, the academicians and across the players in the industry. Let me thank uh, the team of speakers, Professor Ulrich uh, from London and the Professor Esther Shingoma, also the panelists, uh, Dr. Jujus uh, from IMF Dar es Salaam, uh, joining us online, Dr. Habil Olaka, uh, Dr. Musa Masuj, and uh, Mr. Godfrey Nchangila, and everybody in the room, uh, please let's clap our hands together as I announce this uh, session closely or continuing in other networking discussions. And Thank you very much. we clap for them, let's also clap for our moderator, Dr. Tobias. May I request you to please stand up and take two steps at the front and take a group picture, my photographers. Um, as they take a group picture, quick announcement. May I request all the VIPs. Um, um, as you walk out, you will use this door when uh, we go for tea. Unfortunately, we've got to cut short on tea break. We have a participant who is a keynote from Palestine, and his time is limited. We're supposed to be at 11, so we've requested at least another 15 minutes. Uh, may I also request my governor and my governor, uh, deputy governors, Wastafu, speakers, moderators, na keynote, wajana, wote, na waleo, uh, wenye viti wakamati za kudumu za bunge, PIC, uh, PIC, pamoja na budget, uh, number Kitoka tu kwenye huu on the far left, kuna chumba pale, uh, tunomba tupite pale uh, kwa ajili ya logistics, na tutongozana na VIP wengine mbapo huko huko tuelekeza sehemu ya kuenda kunywa chai. Kwa sisi wengine wote na mba tuende like nyasa kwa ajili ya chai, and please let's reconvene at uh, the earliest possible, saane na robo, satano na robo na mba tuwe tumekusha keti ukumbini tayari kwa kupata presentation. Na washukuru sana. Na utakia wote wakati mwema. Asante. Speakers, moderators, uh, keynote speakers from yesterday, today, and today.